Hey guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. I'm thrilled that everyone has enjoyed this past Friday Sew With Me video where I showed you the Quilt Did You Go scrappy herringbone block and how I finished off my quilt, put my backing on, and which quilting stitches I used. When I was filming the video, I thought, well, I'm just doing straight line stitching. Everyone knows how to just straight line stitch. You guys aren't going to want to watch that, right? Yeah, I come to find out every time I say that to myself, you guys always want to see the actual sewing at the sewing machine. Now, nobody really cares about the actual the straight stitching sewing. What they're curious about is how I get my quilt this size through this little bit of space on my sewing machine. Now, if you've been here for about oh, a few weeks or a month or so, you'll know that I am currently using a different sewing machine. Let me give you a little peek at the one I've got right now. Just don't look at any of that messes in the background. This is a Singer Traditions. It's just a basic, simple starter sewing machine. It's got the little bit of a, still has a free arm. I think a lot of this is for just beginners and for people who are like, want to make clothing and stuff like that. But it is working perfectly fine right now. It's getting the job done. It is a little bit more difficult, of course, because when you're talking about a throat space, they're talking about the distance between your needle and the side of the machine here. Let's see what this one currently is. This one's about five and three quarters inches. Now, as you can see, that's a really small space right there. I can't even fit two hands there because my hands are four inches across. My old machine, I, I want to say it was about seven and a half inches, and they do have uh, sewing machines that are made for quilting, and it's like nine, nine and a half inches. You'll have your sewing machine here, and it comes way out like this, so it gives you plenty of room to move the quilt around in there. But just because you don't have a fancy quilting sewing machine doesn't mean you can't quilt a quilt on it. Now, with my old brother machine, when I said it had like a seven, seven and a half inch throat space there, I quilted a king size quilt on it. You kind of got to go slow. You can't do it all in one day because you'll blow out your shoulders and hurt your back, but it can be done. Anything can be done no matter what tools you have. It just depends on how easy it is for you or how hard and how fast or slow you can get the job done. So I did do this one on here. I didn't actually measure it. Let's see, one, two, three. So it's 36 inches by 48. So this little quilt, it's just a little throw around quilt 36 by 48 is not very big it's not even actually a lap size so it's more for a small child but one of the, I'm going to just take you through the process this has already been quilted but that doesn't mean I can't show you how I get it through my machine you don't need to see me and my machine actually sewing you've seen that enough in other videos even though it was a different machine but this time we're going to discuss how to get this big monster through this little space now I'm just doing straight line quilting. I do it a little bit different when I'm doing free motion. I kind of start wherever I want and just work my way around the quilt however it works out. And I have these big plans of doing it in sections, either in rows and columns and quadrants and stuff. But I, I seem to kind of do maybe in a C shape or something. But that's besides the point. Today we're doing straight line stitching. Now mine is six blocks, my quilt is six blocks wide. So I went to my middle seam and I just started with my very first one I just started with the one on the right my subsequent ones I did the left one then the right one so let's just go ahead and start with this left one and I'll show you how I get it in the machine there's a lot of theories on how you can put it through your machine some people say you can roll it up like this and they have the special clamps that you can put on there I tried that and it's going to sound strange, but rolling it up like this seems to make the quilt heavier because you're putting that extra weight on this end of the quilt. So then I found out that I just kind of like it floating around like this. Sometimes when I was quilting on this quilt, I had my special quilter's gloves on I've showed you in the past. They're just like, they're very similar to almost like gardening gloves. They're these uh, cottonish fabric and they have little grippies on it. Maybe before I get to the end, they're all the way over at the other side of the room and I'm blocked myself in here. I'll bring them out after for you. But part of it I had the gloves on and part of it I didn't. It's like halfway through I had to change the bobbin and I just never put my gloves back on. So depending on how you like the quilt with or without your gloves, do it your way. But I found that I just kind of like to, technically, a big technical term here, I just like to squish it and smush it through there. 
I find I have more freedom if I'm just using this little bit here than I have all this. Now this does roll it up out of the way and you can easily, as you can see, get it through here. And that might work really well for you when you're doing straight stitching. But when I'm doing free motion, this does not work for me at all. And then of course you gotta take the time to unroll it and roll it back up and do all that every time you're going through the sections. But as you can see, this is taking, this is just easily sliding right through. And this is just staying right out of the way. A lot of your machines will have a nice little curve through here and it just kind of takes it easily. So for a small quilt like this, you could easily just roll the sides and go like this. That's not what I did, but I have done that in the past. Larger quilts, it doesn't work for me. Small quilts, it's not too bad. Before we get any farther, a good thing is, as you see here, I am, this is not where I normally sew. This is where I film all the time on my cutting table, but I have a lot of space off to the left. And if I were to sew on a table like this, I would put a second table or a TV tray behind it where I sew. You guys have seen it before. I have a desk right up against the wall. So it's gonna support the weight of the quilt. If you allow your quilt to hang off the edge, if I didn't have this table right here, and this part of the quilt was just hanging off the edge of the table, the weight of that quilt is going to be pulling on your stitches and on your sewing machine. Now, even though your sewing machine's going at a decent speed and it, it's chugging along and doing its thing, it'll actually pull on it and your stitches can get a little stretched, they can get a little crooked. You're gonna really be struggling with it and that's gonna cause more problems in your shoulders and upper back. So make sure you have support off to the side, a little bit of support in front of you, and some type of support in the back. I would not let this just go straight onto the floor. I would definitely put something behind it. Even if you have to, I don't know, put a couple chairs back there and lay your ironing board across the chairs. I have a bulletin board sometimes that I set up next to me to hold the extra weight. Anything you can. I When I was sewing in my bedroom, I had had four TV trays. I had two behind me and then two going on the side here. Anything that's gonna hold the weight of that quilt, it's gonna make a big difference. It's gonna be easier on your body and it's gonna look much nicer with your quilting. Okay, so I, like I said, I did it plain and simple for this one. I just take my quilt like this. I decided where I wanted it into my machine like this. And I just kind of keep squishing it through. I just, as it's going, just kind of support it on each side and just kind of keep going like this. It's going to be a little different when your machine's, your, your presser foot's down and the needle's actually going up and down in the fabric. As you can see, mine's kind of moving around a little bit, but it doesn't do that when you're stitching in the real world. We're faking it today, right? So I just do this. I make sure none of this quilt is going to go underneath. So I might just grab it in a bunch like this. And now that I've done my center one, that is in the center most of my quilt. Everything else is gonna be easy after that. So when I'm all done with that one, and let's say I've done both of my stitching lines on there, I'm gonna to move to my next seam. And this one's gonna get easier because the distance from here to the end of my quilt is now six inches less. So once again, I'm just gonna kinda of work it through like that. If you have those gloves on, let me go get the gloves. Oh, I really had myself backed in a corner there. So these are my gloves. These, brands doesn't really matter, but these are Fonz and Porter. It's time for me to go get a new pair because I've worn out most of the little bumpies here. But if you wear these gloves, it grips onto your fabric. So as you're going through like this, you can really kind of hold it and guide it like that. If I were doing free motion, I definitely have my gloves because I like to put my hands like this and I just kind of move it around and swirl it. And I just keep moving through the quilt that way. But as we were doing earlier, just kind of hold it off to the side. Once, as I said, make sure you're never going to be having this go underneath your quilt. So I do like to at least fold over one section here. So I know I'm not stitching this to the back of my quilt because that is not fun to take apart. 
and then I just kind of go through like this all of this down here I'm struggling with it now because I'm standing up but all of this extra stuff of the bottom of the quilt would be sitting in my lap so that's taking all of the weight off of that and it's not dragging down onto the floor got the table on the side you got something in the back catching it and then you just let it go through if you can go super fast if you're comfortable or you can go nice and slow you know it's that fancy little presser foot you got down there it determines how fast and slow you go and some sewing machines have a regulator so no matter how far you put the pedal down how hard pedal to the metal you can only go as fast as a regulator allows it this machine doesn't have anything fancy like that this one just goes fast and I just let it go through. Now, after I've gone through and I've done all of these sections, I just take it, spin it around, because if I left it, if I left it this way, and I've stitched these three here, right? If I needed to go this way, then I would be putting all this extra underneath there, and there's no need for that when I can just spin it around and go in the opposite direction. So I've already stitched this side over here. Now I'm gonna go and stitch these last two seams. Once again, the bulk of it's in my lap. I keep this kind of folded over so I know where it's at. And I just let it go through. This machine has a really slick plastic section through here. So it glides really nicely. Some machines aren't quite that way. Some people take those those oven sill pad where you can put, I know they have some you can put in the bottom of your oven to stop drips and you can have the ones you can put in your pan. You can actually put that on there and cut a hole through it and it'll help glide your quilt over it. You know, so you just wanna see if it's gonna be something that's slippery. If it's something that's got a lot of bumps on it already, then you know that's not gonna be slippery enough for you. I know YouTube has a few uh, videos on how to Someone will chime in with the actual name of them. Just check down in the comments. But you can actually search on YouTube and there's a lot of people that are talking about those specific mats and what to do if you don't want to buy those because those tend to be a little expensive. I've never needed one because my machines are generally, it just, it goes fine for me. And I only have this little bit of an area anyway. If I had a big table or it dropped into a table, then I can use one of those big slick mats. But what am I gonna do, put it on right here? That's really not gonna do too much for me because I already have to worry about the drag coming off of this side. Which is why sometimes, while this is going through there, I might grab this and hold it up a little bit, but to make sure that this, once again, doesn't get underneath the needle. So I, I do a lot of this and a lot of this. But as you can see, Granted, like I said, it's not a king size quilt. Not king size quilt. You might have to take a little bit longer, and you might have to, maybe you might have to scrunch it up a little bit, or do a little bit of a fan fold. Just, you know, the fan fold where you just kind of go like this, almost like pleating it, just to get this part to go through and up out of your way. I think the biggest thing is is with this technique trying to do a big quilt in a small domestic machine is to make sure you have support around you make sure you keep the bottom of the quilt in your lap and you're not like right at the edge of the table give yourself a little support there make sure you have plenty of space on the side to hold the weight of that quilt and definitely have something in the back to catch it also don't think that just because it's past where you stitched that it doesn't matter. It's still going to be pulling on your quilt and making it harder for you to get your stitches nice. I think like with a lot of things in life and in the crafting world, sometimes we just tend to, we tend to overthink it and we tend to scare ourselves. Maybe start with a simple quilt like this that you know it's just scrappy. Uh, if, if it doesn't come out perfect, go ahead and give it to an animal shelter or use it for one of your own pets. Throw it in the back of your car and use it for when you're going out on picnics, you're going to the beach, or you're going to the park with the kids. It's something to throw down on the back seat of the car if anyone who's coming in is wet from the rain or you got a dog or the kids are muddy. It doesn't need to be perfect for that quilt. Sir. It's okay to use a quilt like that. I try to say that to you guys an awful lot, and I'm sure I'm just getting annoying with it, but use your quilts. 
Now, you might want to have a really nice fancy wedding quilt that you give as a gift or one you make for yourself that goes on your bed that you don't want nobody to touch, and that's fine. That's one style of quilting. Let's make another one that's fun and that we can use that's easy to throw back in the washer and get cleaned if the, if the kids spill their red Kool-Aid on it or if the dog unfortunately vomits on your quilt. Mud washes out, right? Let's just enjoy it. Let's look at our bright colors and have fun. So I hope that's answered the questions. Whew, my hands are getting hot. I hope that's answered everyone's questions. If I didn't quite touch on it to the way that it's going to help you, just go ahead and leave it down in the comments. But once again, just start with something simple like this, something you know it's it's not going to be bad if you have crooked lines. You're not giving it to your great aunt Tess, or you're not making it for your father for Father's Day. Just make something that's a utilitarian quilt that can go anywhere and get dirty and washed. Nobody's going to care if you got your lines crooked. Okay, that's it for me today. Thank you guys for watching my channel and all my videos, and I love reading everyone's comments. If you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe, and if you ring that little bell, YouTube will let you know. It's really helpful to my channel. The things that help the channel are if you watch a video, if you like a video, if you leave a comment, and then if you comment on other people's comments too, you know that's perfectly okay that if someone up here says something and you, you like their comment, you can say something nice below them. Now remember, we're a very nice channel here. Don't say anything mean. And then also there's a share button underneath the video. And if you want to share it to your to your Facebook page or to your, there's, there's Google and LinkedIn and Tumblr and there's all kinds of places where you can share it. That really helps other people. It gets the video out there so other people can see the videos and then they can come in and join us for all the fun. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye.